Alex here with a good old fashioned Ask Alex Anything, one of your midweek specials here in the nice land of Norway. Got some castles and shit in the background. We've got a lot of blonde people and a land where a beer costs $25 US per serve. Without a tip, it's absolutely ridiculous. I've actually stopped drinking, not by choice, but by financial reasons. Anyway, we've got three questions, one about game, one about life, and one about the absurd that I need to answer, honestly, on the spot, from some of the boys from the four-week natural here in Oslo. Guys, are you ready? I can see them deliberating on which questions they're going to ask. What do we got? So question from Tyler Durden from LA. Question from Tyler Durden from LA, yes. So, uh, <laughs> question about game is, how do you introduce your friends and family to game when they think it's manipulative and creepy? Right, right, great question. How do you introduce your friends and family to game when they think it's manipulative and creepy? Um, okay, so there's a couple of ways that you can do it. You can say that game and this field of self-development comes from an origin or a source or a group of people that are part of a self-help company and every self-help company focuses on health, wealth and relationships. So you don't want to you don't want to call it game, you want to call it personal development and I know and I try to like keep it conscious that if I was ever to go on a TV show like Ellen DeGeneres or Oprah or uh, you know a current affair in Australia who one day is going to like knock down my door and confront me I'm going to say that I'm not here to manipulate chicks in order to get results. I'm here to manipulate myself to make myself as attractive as possible in the way that I communicate, understand others, think win-win for me and the girls that I'm talking to. And the truth about getting chicks is that the better of a the better of an island that I am as a man, the more that I can develop myself in order to provide and inspire and enable others, the more chicks that I'm going to get. So, to be honest, in the pickup industry, you know, you read pickup marketing from like big pickup companies and they're going to say some shit like, say this and she's going to be on her fucking knees. They say that shit, but when you actually get to the source, when you do the course or have the learning materials, it's not that at all. They're going to tell you what's pretty obvious actually, like be your best self, use your sense of humor, develop that, have a well-rounded personality, all that good stuff. So it's very marketing enticing because everybody's thinking, I want to fuck bitches, but the truth to getting girls is actually developing yourself properly. So it's a bit of a marketing catch, but the best angle to describe it is that it's part of a self-help company of which all of them have an aspect where they focus on uh, relationships and personal in, interpersonal development and connection. Thank you from, I'm sure it's a lot of bullshit, Tyler Durden in Los Angeles, right? Game question. Life and absurd, what do we got? From Adam in Dublin. Who are the most open and extroverted nation and who are the most introverted and closed nation? Men and women? Women or men? Uh, like all together or? All together. Just as a, as a nation. As a culture, men and women combined. Uh, what countries do you find? Which country is the most open and expressive, you said? On either end. Either end of the spectrum. The most and the least. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I'm going to only go off really like developed nations, countries that are safe to travel to or easy and have the infrastructure to easily travel to. Um, the most open nations, um, I would say the Canadians probably are some of the most open nation. Like if I'm, if I'm on, the, on the train in Canada, it's more so in the US, but if I'm on the train in Canada and I'm wearing sunglasses, some Canadian guy is going to be like, wearing the sunglasses today, eh? They just, they just like talk about anything at all times. Chicks are kind of the same as well, very sweet, very educated. Like, a, an, a country that identifies more with being friendly than even the Americans. So, when I think of America, I think of Sesame Street. When I think of Canada, I really think of the yellow brick road. It's funny because Canadians are super nice, super friendly, open people, but their customs and border control is complete assholes. They hold me up every chance they get. It's pretty scary. So, Canadians are super open. Uh, the Australians are very, very open as well. We're both Commonwealth nations, so we're very friendly, but also a little bit, also a little bit like aggressive as well. So I think the Canadians are the most positive, pure, open, and abundant of the Western nations and the best communicators, more so than anyone in Europe. The least expressive country, Finland. Finland, like Finland is a whole other fucking realm. It's out of control. It doesn't make any sense. They don't speak to each other. They, they basically, they're born. They drink all of their life. They fuck someone when they're drunk and have children and then the next generation happens. It's so strange and so weird, but they're so gorgeous. It's absolutely amazing. So as a little boat moors over here next to us, I can see as well my student up there getting results with chicks. Good on him. Good work. 
Good question. Well done. Sorry that I'm getting sidetracked. Game, que no, absurd. We need a question about the absurd as I freeze my ass off here on the pier in Norway. Yep, what do we got? Uh, yeah, it's Alfonso from Puerto Rico. And Alfonso what, from Puerto Rico asks. What's the most embarrassing situation you've ever had that you could share? The most embarrassing situation that I've ever had that I could share? Um, I spoke about this recently. When I was young, I bought bouquets of flowers for like 20 or 20 girls or something. One of them went to a girl, a young girl, who my brother would go on to date for like two years, right? So I already spoke about that one. That was super embarrassing because like I tried and I failed and I was creepy. And then they were like in a relationship in our house for like years and years. So that was pretty embarrassing. Oh no, my most embarrassing situation ever. This is extremely lame. Like this kind of summarizes me when I'm 18 or when I'm 17. My friend had an 18th birthday party in Brisbane, Australia. Uh, he was turning 18 and the plan was we get drunk at the house and then we go to this bar that doesn't check IDs in Brisbane City. So we're at the party, we're all drinking, we're getting drunk, my friends are being, having heaps of fun and then we all bundle into cars. We all bundle into cars to go into the city and they just leave me at the party. So everybody goes to the fucking, into the city to drink together, they leave me at the party. I can't even get into the house where the party is and I'm using my old school phone to call them and they do reject me and I'm just sitting there on my own. Senior year of high school. And what's worse is I go and sleep in my car which has like sheepskin on the back seat and in the car I had drank so much red wine and champagne and bullshit that I vomit all over my car into the sheepskin, smells disgusting, vomit all over myself and they then come back and they find me sleeping in my own car, covered in my own vomit, having ruined my own car and not join the party. So that's when I knew that I was going in the direction of badly, badly needing self-help and some kind of social skills because how the fuck could that even be possible to fuck that up so badly? So there you go, an absurd question about the most embarrassing thing in my entire life. I'm Alex, that was 12, that was 13 years ago and I honestly do feel embarrassed talking about that now, kind of sheepish. Send your questions in. Uh, Ask Alex Anything to this YouTube channel. Check out the other previous Ask Alex Anything videos and be sure to investigate a little bit about the four week natural program that we do all around the world. For example, here in Oslo, Norway, where we have a maximum of 11 guys over the course of 31 days, more than eight sessions, in field uh, coaching, debriefs, uh, info videos. I'm so cold, I can't even speak anymore. Alex from Alex Social. I'll catch you later. couple of key differences that I'll kind of touch on right now. Average girls, four star, we call them four star girls. They're cute, yes, but imperfect, yes. We classify them, average girl, as the kind of girl who you would have fun partying with, sleeping with, hanging out with, getting drunk with, but you wouldn't go out of your way to brag to your friends about her. Whereas a hot girl, you would go out of your way to brag to your friends about her. Not brag, but be like, dude, mate, look at this. This girl's really hot. And with First, the hotter girl, you can be more, you need to be more goofy, more relaxed, more a little bit rock star, like being prone to making mistakes and making errors because then you take the pressure off her and you're not being super formal and strict and kind of uh, stifled like most guys are toward those hotter types of girls. They really have a lot of abundance. The other catch of the hotter girl is that they've got a lot of, a lot of people around them, a lot of people who they're kind of accountable to and people who are aware of them. So they can be a little bit more sophisticated and complicated to, to get. So you've really got to focus on their friends, their social circle, and have a really good, clear sense of their logistics on the night if you want to start building a re-approach type game with them and leave.